Hey there, Scott here. Your video is going to start in about 30 seconds. I just want to give you a little bit of context. The video you're about to watch is part of a series of educational videos. Some of them are taught by me. Some of them are taught by other instructors. The goal here is to bring in experts who have excelled in their niche or their industry over their career and let them teach over to you whatever they specialize in. There's a variety of tools, technologies, walkthroughs, sales, marketing, business, startup, growth concepts and ideas. Hopefully you can learn and the whole goal of all of these videos is to help you level up in your personal or your professional life. Enjoy. Thank you very much for learning so much in this course. I'm Jerry Banfield and I'm honored Ravinder has asked me at this point in the course to share my experience hiring on Upwork. When I've hired over 200 people on Upwork, you can guess that I know a little bit about the hiring point of view. So if you want to be a successful freelancer on Upwork, I think this might be useful for you. The things I have learned through hiring freelancers on Upwork. This is my Upwork profile. You can see 153 reviews. You can see 82 different jobs posted. 14 open jobs right now, 279 hires with 22 people working right now for my company, over $50,000 paid out to people on Upwork. I've been a member since July 2013. I hope what I can share with you is useful for you and maybe even motivating you to build a business where you will be the one hiring online. Thank you very much for getting started. Let's take a look at what hiring all these people has taught me. Thank you very much for watching these videos. My question to you is how do you feel about your chance to level up your Upwork profile now? That's how I look at Upwork as a game. It's a game where you have the chance to level up your hourly rate by consistently doing good work for people and where I have the chance to level up my business and my business profile by consistently hiring people and giving them effective opportunities to serve with me to make the best courses and make the best things I can create online. Thank you very much. I hope this course is useful for you and I'd love to hear your feedback on it. I'd love to see what you think of these videos. I'd love to know what you've done with this information. Just telling you this doesn't do anything. The question is, what are you motivated to do now? I'm so excited to share this one tip with you that I just couldn't wait any longer. I hope that this one tip makes the entire course worth it. If you're even considering working on Upwork or applying to jobs anywhere or trying to get clients, one thing I've learned is the power of online video. Now you know I believe that because here I am doing an online video with you right now. So you know this works. You know this is powerful because you're here learning with me and with Ravender right now. You know it's powerful. Therefore, why wouldn't you want to use that as a part of applying to jobs? I get a lot of people, not just on Upwork, but all over the place through email, through Udemy messages that want to work with me. Now, which of them do I take the most seriously? The ones who make a personal video for me, I take most seriously. Often, I won't even read a long message people send or a long email. If someone makes a three to five minute video Jerry, I made this video just for you. I often will actually watch that video. In applying to jobs, this is a power tip. The people who are most likely to get jobs with me are the ones who make a video. And what should you make in your video? Well, there's lots of things you can make. Just anything in your video to apply to a job can be good. You can see on my channel, I do all kinds of videos. To me, the basic format to do this in is to make a video for every single job you apply for. So don't shotgun apply to a bunch of different jobs, but take a few jobs with the very best clients seriously or the jobs that are most specifically related to what you can help with the best and make videos to them. 
They don't have to be long. It can even just be a talking head video or to me a screen capture one like this would be powerful. Especially if the client has a website, you show them the video, look, I went to your website, I watched a YouTube video, I did this, 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 and that. I looked at what you do and I, after looking at what you do, I think I can really help out with what you do. Here's what I do. And then if you have something like a YouTube channel you could show or videos you've made or blog posts even or your own website, if you could show what you've done in regards to what the client needs, that's really powerful. The reason you're here with me now, the reason I'm able to teach all these courses on Udemy is because I show what I know. I put all these videos up for free, showing 600 plus videos up for free, showing what I know. You then know that I'm worth learning with. And millions of other people have went through this same process to the point where I have hundreds of thousands of students on Udemy. Online video is really powerful and if you use online video on YouTube as a part of your application process, I, from my, what I've seen, you can expect to get anywhere from 10 to 100 times better results if you will make a video as the foundation of your application process and your portfolio online. You can expect so much better than you could ever imagine just trying to put text and do applications the way everyone else does. This way you can do really short, fast applications. You make a video for every job you apply to and then when you go to apply to the job, you just share that video link and put very few words along with it. I love your job, I'm really excited about it. I'm so excited I made this video on YouTube showing you my application to this job. Really simple to read, really simple to follow through, really simple to make a powerful impression. I'm so excited to share this with you. I couldn't wait until you've been through the rest of the course. I hope this one thing makes the entire course worth it in terms of you being able to get something concrete you can use to be successful, not just on Upwork, but anywhere online. If you really want to stand out on Upwork, making a video to apply for a job. To me, that is what gets my attention. I have a lot of people who reach out to me that want me to do things for them, promote their products, teach a course with them, hire them for a job on Upwork. The ones who make a video for me stand out from all the others. The ones who say, Jerry, look, I recorded this video just for you. I feel obligated to watch it also. Whereas I don't often feel obligated to read the entire context of an application for an Upwork job or the entire message someone sent me on Udemy. I feel obligated to watch a video because I feel like a person's put a lot of genuine time and energy, even if it is only a couple minutes, into making a video for me. So if you want to stand out, making video to me is the most powerful way. If you want to demonstrate consistency, you can see here on my YouTube channel, when anyone looks and sees all these videos, that's consistency. For applying to a job, if you can show someone that you've been making videos on whatever you say you can do for six months, that's clear proof that you know what you're talking about or that you at least spend time trying. It's proof you're consistent. If I wanted to get some jobs on Upwork, what I would do is try and find the clients with the principles I've showed before, and then I would do short applications to them with unlisted YouTube videos. That means if it's unlisted, it wouldn't show up here, and yet all you need is the link to it to view it. So I would send a video specifically to that client to say, look, I've looked at your website. If you wanted to work with me, it'd be a good thing to say, Jerry, I've looked at all your courses, I've watched some of your videos, I know what you do, and I think I can help in this specific way. If you see the videos I have on my channel, you can see clear proof that I do the same things you need help with for myself, 
and then here's how I think I can help you. If you want to work with me, please simply make a job offer. I don't want to waste time with a Skype interview because I've already made this video for you. I've already looked at what you've done online. All I need to know at this point is will you pay me? That's all I need to know. If you will pay me, then we could build a deep working relationship from there. And that, to me, would be a very powerful application. Now, yes, some people would watch the video and be like, no, I want to do things my way. The idea is it doesn't take very long. If you can get a system set up to just make some short videos like that, it doesn't take very long to make a very powerful application. Almost no one on Upwork applies to my jobs with a video. And a YouTube link is the way to go. Don't put it on some crazy website no one's heard of. A YouTube unlisted link, or you could even do a list that you could even do your channel. When you were freelancing and applying to jobs on Upwork, you could literally put a video for every client you applied for. And then when someone went to look, they could see all the jobs you applied for. Now you can see somewhat of the ruthless attitude I have about getting things done. If I wanted to get some jobs on Upwork, that's what I'd do. I wouldn't even put them unlisted. I would show the job I applied for so that if you looked, you could go see all the jobs I applied for also. So to me, that is how you really stand out from all the other people applying to jobs on Upwork. And the people who've done that, applying to my jobs, those people have got hired and those people have built exceptional working relationships with me. Thank you very much for starting out with this course. I'm honored that Ravender has invited me to be here with you today to share my experience as a client on Upwork that hires freelancers. So Ravender showed you how he got a job on Upwork in his first 24 hours. And what I have to share with you here is proof that people really are hiring and not people you can't imagine, the people you're already interacting with. I've hired over 200 people on Upwork and I've paid over $50,000 in the last three years to freelancers working with me on Upwork. One freelancer alone has earned around $10,000 on Upwork working with me and has me hooked indefinitely. They can continue raising their rates and I will continue paying higher rates because I love working with them. Upwork is a place of real potential today. And what you learn in this course can motivate you to give Upwork a real try and it can give you practical tools to actually get hired. I tried to get hired on Upwork and I had no luck. I tried and applied to a bunch of jobs and without having the information that's in this course, I got nowhere. I put my hourly rate too high I didn't do a good job applying to my jobs and I got lucky enough that I ended up being in the position to hire people on Upwork instead. So I'm honored to have the chance to share my experience with you today. My experience is in the second last section of the course. After Ravender goes through everything with you, I then give you my tips that I've learned in hiring all of these freelancers online. I share with you what I've learned as a client that hires freelancers and that when you see what I've learned, that I think will help you to get jobs more effectively, to get the right jobs, and to waste less time than I did on Upwork. The best job opportunities on Upwork and the best hiring opportunities on Upwork are jobs that have an indefinite work need that will continue going as long as the client is in business. So let me compare that first to something that is the opposite. When I had my business serving clients online, I often did things that did not have an indefinite need, that weren't ongoing, things like setting up Facebook ads for clients. Often, that's the kind of thing people just try out for a little bit, and I wasn't very aware of the long-term work potential. So I hope sharing this with you is really helpful so you can see it. 
I would work with all these clients on their ads and very often they would have done their own ads and just be starting out or they hadn't done any ads before and so it was easy to quit doing something they'd never done before. I didn't realize that the clients I really needed to build a good relationship with were the ones who were doing Facebook ads all the time, that had a business set up doing Facebook ads, that when I logged in and saw that their account had deep Facebook advertising experience and that they were going to do that indefinitely, that that's where I really needed to build a good relationship. I didn't distinguish between clients who had just wanted to try something out versus clients who had proven consistent work that needed to be done. All the jobs I post today, I post jobs that I'm looking to continue doing indefinitely. And these are three good examples. Spanish subtitles, Eric subtitles, Arabic subtitles, and English subtitles. These are things I expect to be able to do indefinitely. You'll notice I start off with fixed price commitments. I start off working with people for a guaranteed result. So I pay you $5 a minute or whatnot, and then you give me a minute of subtitles. These are things every video I make need subtitles on Udemy. So these are things I have to do indefinitely. So that means when someone starts this kind of job with me, as long as they do a good job, they can keep doing it indefinitely. Now this is a big difference from someone who say, made a couple of videos and wants subtitles just for those videos. So when you can see that kind of difference up front, see the scale of the work to be done. If you see someone who has an ad they've made on a one-time basis and wants subtitles for it, that might be a good job to try and get a review or to try and get started. However, the real value are in jobs like this. If you have the ability to do the subtitles, then you know all you have to do is do them and you'll keep getting more. You'll keep getting more because there's a lot more to do. So I didn't keep an eye out for that in my own business. I didn't realize the clients I really needed to work for the, were the ones who had consistency themselves. So I like consistency and I've said the word consistency a lot in this section. That to me, those are the only kind of clients you want to work for. The top three clients I've had, the number one client paid me more than all the rest of the hundreds of clients combined. The number two and three client combined paid about as much as all the rest of the remaining clients combined. The trick is, it's often hard to tell who could be those number one or two or three clients. Usually the best indication is that there's an indefinite amount of ongoing work to do. So if you can spot that, if you can notice that in the jobs you're applying for, if you can try and distinguish where there's a lot of opportunity for ongoing work versus just a one-time job that you're not likely to get follow-up with. That can help you to try and figure out who's likely to be your one amazing client or one of your handful of clients that give you the chance to work indefinitely on Upwork. The number one thing I've learned in hiring over 200 people on Upwork, spending more than $50,000, I've learned that it's better to work with one freelancer over time that's dedicated and consistent than it is to try and have to hire a bunch of different freelancers. The reason it takes a lot of time and energy to get things started, to get things set up with a freelancer. And the worst thing about hiring freelancers is inconsistency. Hiring someone, getting them set up to try and do the work, and then they stop doing it and you've wasted all that time then working with them and maybe they produced a few things. Consistency, that is the most powerful thing. So as a freelancer, to me what I really like to see hiring freelancers is consistency. If you can show and communicate your consistency when you're getting jobs. So what do I mean by consistency? Let me show you. This is Chantel. I'm grateful Chantel has worked with me now for more than a year on Upwork. I'm grateful that I think I'm her top client. You can see what she's doing. She's worked 
on this job from October 2014 to April 2015 and now she has a new job. So that's almost two years she's worked and she's over here now on WordPress Content Manager. She's earned over $6,000 doing this with me. What I love is that Chantel is consistent. She has a life of her own. She has lots of things she's doing and yet she does the work consistently. What does she do? I have, this is Chantel's work. This is what she's done. Almost every one of these blog posts, she has done. She has went through, what I do, I make videos, as you can see. I find that it is much faster for me to talk and make a video than it is to write a blog post, and yet I realize not everyone wants to watch my videos, that some people prefer to read my blog posts. And then for my website, it's nice to have all these blog posts to communicate and show what I do also. So Chantel turns each video I make, or most every video I make, she turns those videos into blog posts. And that's what she does. It's very valuable. To me, I found on a website that one of the most trustworthy things a website can do is have an outstanding blog. And there's no substitute for my unique voice. So hiring guest posts doesn't work. People want my actual voice. If they're on jerrybanfield.com, they want to hear from Jerry Banfield. Well, I hired and worked with a bunch of people trying to do things like this. Chantel's the most consistent, and this isn't what I originally hired her for. I worked with her over time to figure out what she liked to do, what she was good at, how her talents matched what I needed done, and now she's able to work at home whenever she wants to. All she has to do is listen to the videos. She, I think, can get them automatically transcribed. She edits, puts them in a blog post in a specific format. This is just amazing because all of the value that's produced, I don't have to think about it now. All of this just, from my point of view, comes up. All I do is pay Chantel to do it. She does all of this. And if I tried to hire a bunch of people to re replicate the work she's done, it would be very difficult. What she offers, you notice, is consistency. Look at the dates on these. March 30th, I'll zoom in. March 30th, 29th, 28th, 27th, 24th, 3rd, 2nd. She does this almost every single day. Now, of course, some days she'll schedule a few posts ahead of time. As she consistently works every week no matter what's going on. And yes, you might see there's like five days here she didn't do any. Sometimes she does have things come up in her life. But Chantel to me is a great example of how I work on Upwork. Having a relationship, it's the same as many other places in life. Building a deeper relationship with fewer people often leads to outstanding results. I've never met Chantel. I've never even talked with Chantel. All we've done is exchange messages on Upwork, and she added me as a Facebook friend also to let me know if she's having time off or something like that. So this, to me, is a great example out of all the hires, Chantel has been one of the absolute best. So now from a hiring point of view, I go out there, what I want to do essentially is hire people like Chantel. There are a lot of great people I've worked with who were talented, who did helpful things for my business online, and yet the daily showing up, the predictability, that to me is the absolute most valuable thing. So if as a freelancer, whatever you can do to show you're consistent, that will get you hired by the kind of people you want to work for. And if you've noticed with Chantel, most of these other jobs she's done, she's earned a few hundred and she's earned a few thousand on some of them. You'll notice the job for me she's earned over 6000 on this one job at a higher pay rate. And then on the job she did with me before, she earned several thousand on that also. I would guess by now, Chantel's earned about $10,000 working with me. So if you look at all of the money I've spent on Upwork, you can also see then that 
about 20% of that has went to one person. One person out of 279 people hired, one person has got almost 20% of the total. So this to me is the best of what's possible on Upwork. These are the opportunities from both points of view, from the person hiring and the person who wants to get hired. These are the things that need to be set up. So thank you very much for being here with me today. I'm honored you've spent this time with me and I'll do my best to keep sharing what I've learned about hiring on Upwork. As a client on Upwork who hires freelancers, I've learned that I don't need to hire a bunch of freelancers. What I need to hire is a few good freelancers that I can build deep relationships with over time. What I'm going to do in this is show you Chantel's history on her profile here that might be useful for you in seeing how this plays out. And compare this to what I did in my business. So in my business, when I started out trying to get clients, my thought was to get as many clients as possible. What I didn't realize is that the more clients I got, the harder it was to do a good job for each of them. The ideal position I discovered was to have a handful of clients I could do a very good job for, and I could do such a good job for them, they eventually would have to compete against each other for my time and energy. So what you can see is this same progress on Chantel's profile. Now, if you can think of it this way, it seems a lot less overwhelming. So what I thought first, I had no clients when I started out. I thought when I was freelancing online, and I guess I still am, I just teach courses now. I thought I needed to have a lot of clients, that that was my key to success. Well, let's show you what's happened for Chantel. She hasn't had a lot of people that hired her. She's had a few people that have hired her that she's done a great job for, and she's worked her way up in less than two years to literally doubling how much she earns per hour. Now, what you'll notice, I gave her what looks like the first review on her profile. I was one of the first people to hire her on Upwork. So if you'll notice, this was a $25 fixed price job. Now, this might not have looked very promising. You might be trying to start out and saying, I want, I don't want a crappy little fixed price job. I want something that pays hourly. I want something that is going to pay me consistently. You just said consistency in the last video. When you're getting started, it can be hard to compete with someone like Chantel who might be applying to the same job you are applying to. She's going to get hired probably 99% of the time if you don't have any experience on Upwork. So this often means starting out that fixed price jobs are what you need to take. The key is to show some social proof on your profile that you've done a good job for someone else and to have some faith in someone else. And here's the trick. Chantel never would have guessed probably that this little $25 fixed price job would lead her to making around $10,000 working with me within the next two years from taking this job. My number one client hired me for a $100 Facebook likes job. Within two years, that client had paid me hundreds of thousands of dollars to do work for them because even when I screwed up the original job, I delivered fake Facebook likes from Fiverr. And the client said, Jerry, those weren't very good. And I said, you're right. You're right. Those weren't good. Those were fake likes. However, I've made a better system now to do this with Facebook ads. Do you want to try again on a little bit bigger project? So Chantel, you can see, started out with several fixed price jobs. This one was for me also. So both of these jobs are with me and that led her then to working with me up here in the digital marketing job as it's called. So what you'll notice, so this those first two fixed price jobs led Chantel to this fixed price job. And you'll notice here she got a few hourly jobs and a few other fixed price jobs. But once she had those fixed price jobs, she had several of those with good reviews. 
Then she got into an $11 an hour job here, a $10 an hour job here, a $12 an hour job here. And then that's when I transitioned to hourly with her. So you can see she's consistently worked up her profile rate a little bit at a time. And now what she's got, she's got up here, she's making $18 an hour with me. And now just recently, or fairly recently, I guess, I guess it's been almost a year she's had these two. She's got some jobs that pay a little bit more than what I'm paying. Now, she hasn't worked that many hours on them. Here's the thing, though. I'm the top paying job in terms of hours she's got. I give her up to 20 hours she can work every week. Now, she's in a position that she can find a job for $19 or $20 or even higher she now is asking $22 an hour on her profile. So what does that mean for me? She's got me in a position, if she lands a $22 an hour job for 20 hours a week, I pretty much have to go up to tw at least 22, if not 23 or $24 an hour. She's got one client, me, who's determined to keep working with her because what she does is so predictably valuable on my website and trying to get someone else to do it, I don't even want to deal with that. So she's got me in a position that she can essentially, all she needs to do is have one other client that pays more and gives her enough hours. She can effectively allow her clients to compete against each other. Now these clients she's working with aren't currently asking for a lot of time out of her. But this one, has put in a lot of time with her. And you can see she's put in a lot of time with me. So all she really needs is about three clients who all love her work and she can continue to raise her hourly rates. She can continue to play all of us off against each other. Right now it looks like she has two or so. And she, I believe, is still in school so she's got a lot of commitments. Essentially though, if she wanted to, she just needs another client or two and she could continue to raise her hourly rate up until the max that we could handle. So what you can see is that Chantel hasn't gotten a ton of different jobs with a ton of different clients. She's done a good job on a few jobs and she's got a couple of clients that love her work and keep hiring her. So you don't need to get a whole bunch of people to hire you and be impressed with your work. All you really need is to do a great job for every person that hires you. Do your best for every person that hires you. And sometimes that might mean if you don't like working for someone, stop working for them. Do you And make lifelong clients. Chantel can work for me indefinitely. And I'll keep paying her higher hourly rate as long as I can afford it. So this to me... This is what works for me hiring. And to me, this is a great formula for successful freelancing.